Good afternoon, beautiful fish lovers, and welcome to another episode of Puff Daddy Reef. Today, I talk about the max spec recurve. I'll give you an update on how to modify your innovative Marine Nouveau Fusion mesh filter top so your fish don't jump, and I'll talk about some future prize giveaways. So let's get started talking about this light. This is the max spec recurve. This is the light that I released a review on uh, last week. Now, in that review, I went through a lot of the details, the unboxing, how well it was constructed, how I loved it, I looked at all the channels, and then I did mention my biggest gripe for it is the amount of LEDs in the wings that are dedicated to green and red. And it's just a lot of it is in there, and I think it has to do with they needed LEDs evenly spaced so that they would kind of blend, but there's still a lot of power dedicated to LEDs that I'm literally never going to turn on. So what I did is I set the settings to exactly the right settings that I want to do to make it look good. I turned everything up to 100% and I took some par readings. Now if you go to my Instagram account, that's puff.daddy.reef.tv on Instagram, I've actually listed the par results of those settings and near the mid-level of the tank, it was around 200 something. Um, I can't quite remember it, so go to my Instagram and find exactly what that is, but it's definitely enough to grow SPS coral. Now, is it the perfect light for this tank? Absolutely not. This is a five foot tank. This light really needs to be on something that's four feet or even smaller than that. Their light doesn't quite span under. And what I found is there's a lot of light drop off when you're anywhere from underneath the center of the tank. For example, when I put my PAR sensor on the floor of the tank right here, even at max settings, I was only getting about nine PAR. I was getting about maybe a 50 um, to 80 PAR drop off, just being a little bit to the side here. So this light does have a lot of PAR drop off. It doesn't give you the full effect of the LED T5 combo that you'd expect. Like I said in my previous review, I would say that the lights on here at max are equivalent to one T5 bulb. So you basically have an LED fixture with one T5 bulb on either side. Um, but I would definitely want to run at least two T5 bulbs on either side. My ideal fixture for this tank would probably have three on each, but it's really hard if impossible, not impossible to find uh, LED bulbs that come in clusters of three. Now, I was able to actually get this thing to set on my tank um, using these brackets and how I was able to do that and thank you for everyone in the comments who gave me suggestions for that, is there's actually extra holes for mounting brackets all along the light fixture. And I was able to use those holes to actually unscrew these and slide this all the way back. And I was able to get two bolts in there. And then in order to span the way all the way down at the end, I, was, I had to get reduced only to uh, one bolt. Sorry about the focus there. So it's not quite as... Uh, stable at that end. Another thing that I wanted to point out with this light and why it's not necessarily perfect for the Red Sea Reef or 650 Peninsula is if you don't have the hanging kit and you're just mounting it, it kind of interferes with this little cap for the overflow. And that's definitely a problem. Now for this light, I really, really, really want to hang it. That would actually fix some of my major gripes with it because I could hang the light a little bit further forward a foot and then I could hang like a Kessel or something to cover the extra foot of this tank. But I can't do that because the hanging kit has not been released. I feel like Max, Max Spec somewhat jumped the gun on the release of this device. Um, but you can't argue with its, its beauty and its simplicity. And if you have a mixed tank, a tank that is like SP, uh, LPS with some SPS in the center, it's gonna be just fine. It's gonna be a really great light. Um, you're gonna have to decide for this yourself if you like the look of its particular spectrum, but it's definitely gonna grow coral for you. So those are my thoughts on that. Follow me on Instagram as I do more trials testing it. Once again, it's not the perfect light for this tank, but it might be the perfect light for your tank. I just really want to focus on a SPS dominant tank where I want maximum spread and even coverage. Here is my innovative Marine Nouveau Fusion Aquarium, and boy, is it gorgeous. It's looking great, and there are fish in it. Sadly, though, I did have a loss of a fish. This is the remains of my poor firefish. I do have another firefish in there. He is still alive. But what happened is this guy jumped. You can see I have double screen nets on here right now. And that is in order to stop this very thing from happening. 
what happened is he jumped straight through the nets. You can see that the holes on these nets on these nano tanks are actually quite wide. And I'm a little surprised at that because it's a nano tank. It's probably going to have small fish. These holes will not stop a firefish from jumping out of your tank. So what I'm going to do in just a moment is I'm going to show you how I'm going to modify that in order to much better protect this tank from jumpers. Fortunately, I still have one firefish and a couple other guys in there. I also picked up a chalk bass and a royal grama. There's a chalk bass. He's a little shy right now. He's kind of hiding way down there. Um, but it is morning and he's getting used to things. So those will be cool. I'll talk a lot more about those fish later. Quick update on the Rico's Nano Tank Challenge. The power beaming is going great. The aquarium is up and stable and the sexy shrimp are having a good time shaking their bottoms everywhere. There is one right now. Now I still have the problem. There's not a lot of flow. I'm still doing the turkey based or daily water changes, but I have two shrimps and a snail alive in there. The coral is doing okay. But this tank definitely needs some work and I still, probably today, so tune back in next week and you can see what happens when I tilt this to greatly increase the water volume. The firefish just came out to say hello. So here he is and I am so sorry that your buddy jumped, but we're gonna do everything we can to keep you safe. All right, so let's go over some questions from my previous video. This was my video that was the review on the max spec recurve. I have a comment from AW that says, sell it, get the G4. Now the Radeon G4 is an excellent LED light. It's probably one of the best ones out there. It still doesn't achieve this kind of full even color um, or light distribution approach that I really want for my SPS tank. I would much rather get a massive uh, T5 fixture than just uh, G4, so maybe Radeon G4 supplemented with T5s would be pretty good, but for the price of the number of G4s that I would need in order to cover this tank, I think I would need at least four, um, which definitely would be very, very much more expensive than this current fixture. Someone asked me what the cost of this light. This light was $1,300, so extremely expensive. Could have got a 4K TV and said got an LED light for a fish tank. Everyone has their own priorities. Reef guy loves it. It's looking nice. Um, Jeroro Mouse is very adamant that my hanging situation that I originally shown did not look very safe. I had it strapped to some PVC pipes and yeah, that wasn't safe. So thanks for telling me to fix that. A lot of people actually gave me the idea to adjust um, the pins on that. So Steven uh, Jovanowski told me to use just two legs on one end and he was exactly right. Um, also, uh, Phil Hulks also said that as well. Um, Reefroid, he's a fanboy of the AP700, says it's far superior. I would have to say the LED clusters in the AP700 are far superior. I would much prefer those. Um, what I would really want is the AP700 LED clusters in this light with the wings and also in the form factor, beauty, and honestly, some of the simplicity of the light. I found over time that the control system, the onboard system on the Max Spec is actually very usable. Um, because it has a screen, you can set all the settings yourself. Unlike the AP700 that doesn't have a screen on the fixture at all, with this light, I can actually uh, program it all. There's no need for me to get the wireless controller. John Doe definitely a real name, wonders if manufacturing will be able to come up with software changes to change the colors of the strip light. I don't think that's going to be possible because these are fixed LEDs. There's so many number of red LEDs and software is not going to change a red LED to a blue LED. Um, that's just how it is. So they're going to have to deal with it. They might in the future release an upgraded version with different LEDs in it. Who knows, or maybe more power on the side strips doubling the number of side strips, any of those things could help improve it in my mind. So that's all for questions. Let's talk a little bit about the next giveaway. So I'm still cleaning up a lot of the old supplies from my old tanks. And what I found is I still have a lot of equipment that I can't use. Now, some of it, it's very used and it kind of works. It works, whatever. I don't feel necessarily comfortable with selling this, this to someone, um, but I don't mind giving it away. So. Most of the stuff basically works, but it's very old and used. And I would like to give that to you guys. So once a month, somewhere in my video, I'm gonna have instructions to enter the contest. 
I'm gonna put these in, in my video, somewhere between the one minute and maybe six minute mark. You're gonna have to watch the video to actually find out. When you enter, I'll do a drawing on the following video and then I'll mail the stuff out to you. Some of the things that I'm going to put in is this old auto top off system. This uses a basically a float switch. It's kind of a DIY system. It's worked for me. Um, it'll be great for a quarantine tank. I just have three tonsies right now, so I don't necessarily need this. Also, a really big one that I'm gonna be giving away, so definitely um, let me know when you're ready to see this go up. But this is a Aqua Controller Junior by Neptune Systems. This is a very old system, um, but it basically does work. It, you have to control it basically using this uh, menu in here in the screen. It is a little difficult to set up and you have to add some kind of gain on the clock to keep it going, but I can definitely help you with that if you're having any issues. So it works. I had this running on my quarantine tank as well. I'll be giving that away. Now I'll be doing this once a month. I won't tell you what video that it's in, um, but subscribe to my videos, watch all my videos, and you'll have the opportunity to win this cool stuff. I think once I run out of stuff, I might start giving away corals. We'll, we'll kind of see, but right now I have enough old stuff that I just need to get rid of. So who better than to give it to you? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this netting and I'm going to put a second layer of netting to make the holes on this a lot smaller. The netting I'm using, I got from Bulk Reef Supply. Uh, you can go to their website and find it. This is the quarter inch netting. From what I found is the quarter inch netting, well, of course, it needs to be small in order to stop the small fish from jumping, um, but it also looks a little nicer than the bigger netting that's available. I have a review on my channel on the Bulk Reef Supply mesh netting and also an instructional video on how to put together their screen top nets. So if you're interested in that, please go to my channel page. I'll also have the link in the description below. So let's get started. I'm gonna take this netting, I'm gonna cut it to size. I have zip ties, which I'm gonna to use to basically hold it in place at various points. I ran out of clear zip ties, so I'll have a couple of black ones in there. Maybe I'll replace them later, but what's more important to me is that this uh, last firefish does not jump. So let's get started. So I think what I'm gonna do is, basically I'm gonna zip tie it down first. And then once it's zip tied down and kind of going counter to the netting. So the netting on this um, lid actually goes diagonally. So if I make this go horizontally, I think it'll help, but I'll zip tie it in and then I'll use the scissors to kind of cut everything. Um, I'm gonna start with a center zip tie and I'm gonna make this one white since it's in the center. I actually have um, two white zip ties. So because of that, um, I will use both those in the center and then I'll use the black ones on the edge. So we're just going to put one right here and I'm actually going to have to lift it up to get the zip ties. Oh, this is a mess. Maybe you shouldn't do this on top of the tank, um, but it does look better here for dramatic effect. So I'm going to do that. Just broke. <laughs> I just broke the mesh on the lid. I'm a little upset about that. So maybe you don't want to try this at home. Um, it just it just snapped. This was kind of surprisingly brittle plastic. Well, this little project was not without incident. Um, I'm a little upset that I snapped some of the mesh right there. Um, but overall, I think this is gonna be a lot safer for my fish. Their gaps are much, much, much smaller. So hopefully that firefish does not jump out and he'll live a happy, healthy life in the ultra low maintenance nano reef paradise. So thanks again for tuning in and I will see you next time where I drill a hole in my Red Sea Reefer Peninsula.